Yo, what's up everybody? This is William from For The Billions back with another video. Hope you guys are doing well today. Today, I wanted to talk about an important topic, which is how to maintain after a layoff. So, and I'm, I'm more so talking about financially. How do you maintain yourself financially after a layoff? You have no income coming in. Uh, they have taken away your ability to earn and now you need to find some other way of being able to make an income, okay? So I don't know for, you know, the person who is watching, have you ever been laid off? Do you feel like you're in danger of getting laid off or are you just trying to make a career transition? I'm sure that you can find some value from this video. So if you enjoy this type of topic, please go ahead and hit the like button. It may be a small click for you, but it means a lot to me and I would really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to tell you guys, I was laid off back in April, April 1st, right? So April Fool's Day, I got laid off. It wasn't a joke, but um, it was actually, uh, since it was the first day of the month, I had a full month worth of health insurance. So that's why they chose to lay me off on the first of the month. Um, so it wasn't really a joke. They were just saying like, hey, you know, at least you get like the, to the end of the month to get your medical events and affairs in order. I was able to do that. But um, one of the things that helped me out financially was the fact that I was able to get a severance package from my my previous employer. And, you know, I, it kind of I did get a heads up that, hey, you know, they were going to be laying off. I did take some actions to try and find a new job and put my resume out there and go to a lot of networking events. The thing about it is that there's nothing that directly gets you the job, okay? So if you get laid off or you're trying to make a career transition, there's not just a one thing that will get you the job guaranteed, okay? You can pay thousands of dollars to go to these conferences. You can go to these networking events and mixers and summits and all this and that. So you can network aggressively, right? I've been doing networking aggressively. I've met a lot of people. It makes you, it helps you live a more fulfilling life speaking to a lot of people and being in different areas and experiencing more things, but it does not directly get you a job. Getting certifications. Since I have been laid off, I have gotten two certifications and it does not directly get you a job, right? Matter of fact, I got the certifications simply because the position I was applying for required you to have some experience working with the tool. And my previous employer did not use that tool whatsoever. They didn't use it at all. It's like something completely new that I just found out about. And it was a trend I was seeing that a lot of people who are applying for jobs as a data engineer, that's what they needed. They needed some experience using that tool. It's, the tool is called Databricks. And I was thinking like, man, I, you know, they never gave us that tool. I never used it before. How can I actually get some sort of experience using specifically that tool? Because right now, like you don't get the luxury of getting like having experience and a degree and then getting the job based off of previous experience. You had to have specific previous experience with their tech stack, which is odd, right? I'm pretty sure that there are some people who fall through the case like, hey, you know, we just need somebody who can work with the tools. I kind of knows what, what to do, or uh, they're already kind of like on their way. They may not know every tool that we use in our tech stack, but they kind of already know the gist of some things. And then if they are being introduced to something else, they can learn something new. Um, but they have at least 70% of what we're asking on our job description on their resume. So there are people who are like that, but in my experience, especially like right now in today's job market. And right now it is the end of June. So it has been almost three full months uh, since I have been laid off almost three months. But I'm gonna tell you guys is that going like getting certifications, I got certifications. I apply for, I apply for a job. They interviewed me. I told them, Hey, I got a certification in the tool that you guys are using. I may not have used it at my previous job, but now I got certified in that tool. So that way I can say, hey, I can validate that I have experienced with the tool. I know what it is. And I went the extra mile to where I can actually pass a test if you were asking me questions about the tool. So I did all those things, got the certifications and um, I did the interview. They, you know what they told me? They told me that there is no position available or, and then I did another one. And then they said, 
um, you know, they declined me, right? Uh, because I did have experience with the tool. I didn't have prior working experience with it, despite having a certification in it. So I was like, okay, well, I got, I have experience. I have the certification. I ne I've been networking like crazy, uh, networking aggressively. Um, and those things don't directly get you the job. Uh, another thing is that you can attend workshops. You can um, do mock interviews. You can go to career. I, actually, I hired a career coach. So I hired a career coach as well to be able to help me um, figure out some things I'm doing wrong with my job search right now. And that has been very helpful. So all these things are extremely helpful. So networking, getting certifications, going to uh, conferences, going to workshops, um, getting career coaching, mock interviews, all these different things are extremely helpful. But the reason why you don't directly get a job from all these things is simply because the job decision is somebody else's decision is somebody else's decision to be able to give you the job so if you have no income coming in because you were laid off or you're trying to make a career transition or you're trying to you just recently graduated from either a boot camp or from uh, a college you have to have you have to kind of let somebody else make a decision on if they want to even give you an offer right and usually there's hundreds of other people who are also in the same predicament as you also trying to get the job so you're trying to get the job other people are trying to get the job and they may be in a better position than you career-wise i had somebody tell me that i needed to go down on my salary ex expectations because they had somebody who was one year older than me and they said they had one year more of experience than i did and that for some reason just made them uh more valuable that one year of experience i was like what makes you think that he can do the job better than me okay he can't right the reason why he can't do the job better than me is because i love my job right i love what i do and i'm gonna go the extra mile to make sure i do a better job than anybody else i'm going for the number one spot right anybody who's watched my live stream you probably have seen the number one spot um gift that i play whenever somebody comments first but i genuinely mean that i genuinely mean that i am going for the number one spot my personality has changed tremendously over the years. And I started to believe that I am the best thing out there. And I hope that it resonates with you guys that, hey, you should think the same thing. You should also be striving to be number one, to get to the number one spot. Right now, you should be trying to take charge of your own opportunities and your own career. So I bring all that up to say, is that financially how do you take care of yourself after a layoff first things first is that you have to get ready so that way you have to stay ready so that way you don't have to get ready okay you have to stay ready so that way you don't have to get ready what i mean by that is that you need to have been saving up some money before the layoff actually happens okay i saved up a good chunk of money before I was laid off, I was able to save up at least six months of savings before I was laid off. Okay, so I had six months of like discretionary spending and then also spending just for bills, just to be able to survive. So you want to make sure that you can do that without having to go into debt specifically uh, after you get laid off. Like if you get laid off and you have to go directly into debt, that means you didn't adequately prepare for the layoff. Okay, you can leverage some credit cards and debt you know just some to like kind of get you by but i would highly suggest having the money already in your account so that way you can pay it off right it can give you at least a 26 day buffer but make sure you never spend more money than you have in your account okay so not financial advice you know because you had to speak to a financial planner but those are some things i was able to do i was able to save up some money um, another thing that you can do in order to maintain after a layoff is looking for opportunities that may not fall within the lines of a job. And what I mean by that is you could start attending venture capitalist uh, events. You could start going to 
uh, your chamber of commerce. You can start listening in on different calls with different business owners. You can start going to some business accelerators. And what it all comes down to is you could start either freelancing using the same type of tools that you use at your previous job, or you could build a project or an app, uh, or you could uh, build like a business based off of your already acquired skills. Not only would that be able to help you to be more of a better candidate as long as in addition to all those other things I listed in the beginning, but also it could potentially help you to build an audience, a community, and then also it could lead to you making and generating some income, okay? Another thing is I would not say it's a bad thing to take a bridge job, a bridge job meaning some job that pays you way less and has less uh, less benefits, but uh, can afford you enough to where you're not at complete zero income. Okay, it kind of adds a little bit more of a buffer. The only thing about bridge jobs is that it bridge jobs usually could be something like I take a job working in the warehouse, <laughs> right? Terrible job. I would not recommend anybody go and work in the warehouse because you're kind of like in the essentially in one of the worst environments, right? But I used to do it. Uh, it's real easy work. They really just need bodies there. They just need people there. So it's no real interview process. Uh, but that's, that, be, that would be considered a bridge job. They pay so little though too. So I would uh, suggest um, weighing your options before you take a bridge job because it does take away time from all those other things I was talking about, like getting a certification, networking. It really does hinder you to be able to get one of those bridge jobs and then actually have the time and energy to be able to do other things so make sure that you know you if you know that's like the last option i would say would be getting one of those types of jobs maybe a bridge call maybe a bridge job isn't maybe that extreme right going all the way down to being like a temporary worker in a warehouse maybe it could just be you taking instead of getting a data engineer position taking a data analyst position because then you could you get paid less but you can start leveraging some different tools. Some of the tools and some of the skills that you may learn, maybe just uh, data visualization, which is something that data engineers don't have to use very often. Like we do have to use dashboards and stuff like that, but data analysts have to be able to present different data and dashboards and they have to use things like Tableau and Power BI and they have to know SQL. They have to know so many different things that data engineers also need to know, but they may not have the ability to be able to make changes within the database and build pipelines. They may not do those things, but they do visualize the data to help make the business better. So that may be a bridge job for you too. So, you know, just try and weigh your options on what you want to do for your own career. Like I said, there's so many different opportunities out there, so many different options. Please be aware that there are a lot of uh, fake jobs out there. You do not wanna keep giving out your data to people who will sell your information to a whole bunch of different data brokers and you start getting spam text messages and spam emails. You wanna make sure that you safeguard yourself from these things and try and get as get references and when you get references for different jobs that you want to apply for, it gives you a leg up in addition to all those other things. And of course, references do not directly get you the job because it is still somebody else's decision at the end of the day, but it helps you out more than anything. An internal reference or recommendation helps you out more than anything else I listed. Networking, all, every single thing I listed, getting an internal reference helps you out the absolute most as the highest tier thing that you can do is get an internal reference okay because not only will it give you a leg up over all the other competition to where hey if you interview and you know you do a good job but then you also got the recommendation the reference they will definitely start going for you okay so that's what i wanted to bring up today um also the people do get paid too that's another thing it's in their best interest to give you a reference if they know who you are and you aren't going to give them a bad name um, but yeah, that being said, guys, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And also hit that bell notification icon if you want to be notified whenever I make new videos on YouTube. Hope you guys 
have a great day please go ahead and hit the links down in, in the description down below so that way you can check out the before the billions newsletter and also the discord so that way you can speak with either me or anybody else within the btb squad i would really appreciate that with that being said guys do not forget to build your billions